Some of the gases present in our atmosphere dissolve in rainwater and cause it to become acidic. Here we'll examine some of these. Carbon dioxide has been present in Earth's atmosphere for billions of years, long before humans were around. Because CO2 is present in the air, it comes in contact with water droplets in the clouds. When CO2 dissolves in water, it reacts with the water to produce hydronium ions and hydrogen carbonate ions. H3O plus formed by dissolved CO2 has always been present and has always caused rainwater to be slightly acidic. The presence of dissolved CO2 in natural rainwater unaffected by human activity, produces enough hydronium to bring the pH as low as 5.6. Because natural rainwater has a pH as low as 5.6, rain with any pH 5.6 or above is not called acid rain, even though a pH of 5.6 to 7 is acidic. Rain with a pH below 5.6 is called acid rain because it is more acidic than rain naturally is. Generally, rainwater with a pH below 5.6 is caused by gases from human activities. Some gas is produced by naturally occurring phenomena such as volcanoes or lightning can also cause acid rain in localized areas. It's important to remember that rainwater with any pH 5.6 or above is not technically called acid rain, while rainwater with any pH below 5.6 is called acid rain. You may recall that nonmetal oxides are oxides of elements on the right side of the staircase on the periodic table. Remember, nonmetal oxides react with water to form acidic solutions. Nonmetal oxides produced by human activities are the major sources of acid rain. The nonmetal oxides produced by human activities that contribute most to acid rain include nitrogen monoxide or NO gas, nitrogen dioxide or NO2 gas, which is sometimes referred to as N2O4 gas, sulfur dioxide or SO2 gas, and sulfur trioxide or SO3, which is present in air as liquid droplets. Nitrogen oxides, NO and NO2, are present in exhaust gases of internal combustion engines that run on gasoline or diesel fuel. So the main source of nitrogen oxides, sometimes collectively referred to as NOx, is automobile exhaust. Air is about 78% nitrogen and about 21% oxygen. Air forms part of the mixture injected into the cylinders of an internal combustion engine. Inside the cylinders of this type of engine, the temperatures can reach as high as 1900 degrees Celsius. At this high temperature, nitrogen can react with oxygen to produce nitrogen monoxide gas. They can also react to produce nitrogen dioxide gas. Some of the NO produced also reacts with oxygen to produce NO2 gas. This NO2 will be present in the exhaust of vehicles using these engines, and some of it will reach the atmosphere, where it will react with water droplets to produce nitrous acid, HNO2, and nitric acid, HNO3. Because it is a weak acid, HNO2 undergoes partial ionization in rainwater to produce hydronium ions and nitrite ions, NO2-. The strong acid, HNO3, or nitric acid, will completely ionize in water to produce hydronium ions and nitrate ions, NO3-. The presence of hydronium ions formed from both acids caused the rain to be acidic, or acid rain. 
You may want to pause the video, take a screenshot of this page and print it. It is good to be familiar with these equations. Two other harmful substances that are produced by human activities are sulfur dioxide, released from coal burning power plants and smelters, and sulfur trioxide, which forms when sulfur dioxide reacts with air. Let's see how these two substances are formed. Fossil fuels such as coal usually contain small amounts of sulfur. When they're burned, the sulfur in them burns too. When sulfur burns in air, it produces sulfur dioxide gas, or SO2. But SO2 can also come from other sources. Metals occur in nature in ores, which are compounds of the metals with nonmetals. A metal combined with the nonmetal sulfur is called a sulfide ore. Two examples of sulfide ores are zinc sulfide and iron 4 sulfide. Sulfur is removed from ores in a process called roasting, where the ores are heated in a high oxygen environment. This is one of the processes that occur in refining or smelting metals. The equation that describes the roasting of the ore zinc sulfide is 2ZNS plus 3O2 gives 2ZNO or zinc oxide plus 2SO2. Similarly, a common iron ore, iron 4 sulfide or iron pyrite, is heated in oxygen. To produce iron 3 oxide or Fe2O3 and SO2. Some of this SO2 in the air will react with oxygen in the air to produce sulfur trioxide, SO3. This reaction often takes place on the surfaces of dust particles in the air. SO2, being a non metal oxide, will react with water droplets in the air to produce H2SO3, or sulfurous acid. Sulfurous acid is classified as a weak acid. SO3 present in the mixture is also a non-metal oxide, so it will react with water, producing H2SO4, or sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is classified as a strong acid. Because H2SO3 is a weak acid, it undergoes partial ionization in water to produce hydronium ions and hydrogen sulfite ions. And because H2SO4 is a strong acid, it ionizes completely in water to produce hydronium ions and hydrogen sulfate ions. The presence of hydronium ions in the water results in the formation of acid rain. You may want to pause the video, take a screenshot of this page and print it. It is good to be familiar with these equations. Humans are not the only source of acid rain. It can also be caused by natural phenomena. Volcanoes can release large amounts of SO2 into the atmosphere. And the extreme localized heating caused by lightning can cause nitrogen and oxygen in the air to react and form nitrogen monoxide, which using the sequence of reactions we discussed can cause acid rain. The reason people are concerned about acid rain is it has some serious effects. We'll outline some of the effects of acid rain here. Acid rain causes soil and rock to release AO3 plus ions. Aluminum ions are toxic to many fish species and can seriously affect the health of trees and crops. Acid rain can also dissolve and wash away many of the good nutrients that are needed by trees and crops. When trees are weakened by acid rain, they are more susceptible to disease. Acid rain dissolves certain rocks such as limestone or marble 
which are made up of calcium carbonate. Many buildings and statues have been damaged by years of exposure to acid rain. Acid rain can also dissolve toxic metals present in rocks and soils. The resulting ions of these metals can then enter water supplies and contaminate them. Acid rain is not as big a problem as it once was in many places. This is due to increased awareness of the problem and pressure on governments to react. Beginning in the 1970s, many governments have imposed strict regulations concerning air quality. This includes emissions from thermal power plants, vehicles, and industrial processes. You're probably aware that new vehicles are all equipped with numerous devices to control emissions. One of the most important are catalytic converters, which greatly minimize the release of harmful exhaust products. You may also have noticed that there are more and more hybrid vehicles on the roads. These have lower emissions than other vehicles. There are also some vehicles that run on fuel cells, which have zero emissions of harmful gases. In many places in the world, thermal coal-burning power plants are being phased out, and alternate sources of energy, such as wind, tidal power, and geothermal energy, are being used instead. We had mentioned that SO2 is a product of smelting sulfide ore as a metal. In many places, this SO2 is reclaimed and used to produce sulfuric acid on an industrial scale, with very little of it reaching the environment. 